So thank you for, thank you for coming to, to listen today. Um, you know, there, it's incredible what's happening today in India and actually all over the world. So I hope that through my story and our story at Kano, um, you know, I'll be able to share some insights uh, that could be helpful to you. You know, it really starts with a single step, a long journey. Uh, for me, that first step was about four years ago when I met for breakfast a guy named Saul Klein. Um, and, you know, we talked about education and emerging markets uh, and the role of technology in education. And, you know, it ended up with me after several months' time taking a flight from Tel Aviv to London uh, to build a company with him and with our third co-founder, Alex. But really what was amazing is, you know, in that small circle, majority of the world live in. Again, you know, we live, I live in London and I'm from Israel, and we live in a world where we think that a lot of the new stuff only comes from, a, uh, you know, from the west side. But actually, you know, with billions of people living in, in what people call the emerging markets, it's incredible what, what is happening now and what will happen in the future. So, I, you know, I've worked in a big company. I started a, a venture when I was in university, and, you know, I always knew I wanted to build a long-lasting company that has a beautiful, strong, lovable mission. Um, and really, it all boiled down through connecting the dots by a six-year-old uh, who told us that he would like to build his own computer, but it needs to be simple and fun as Lego, so no one has to teach him. His name was Mika. Now he's over nine, um, and he gave us that challenge. So we thought, well, who is this crazy kid that wants to build his own computer? But we've decided to try and build a computer that he can make by himself. But we also saw some other creators at the age of nine, like you know, Kane in East LA, who built a cardboard from, from boxes and, and cardboard arcade place. Uh, and we thought that's insane. And also Kelvin, that at the age of 11, taught himself to build electronics without knowing anything about it. And he built battery packs uh, and radio stations. And he taught himself in one of the poorest countries in Africa. And we thought, that's incredible. So we started a company called Kano. This is a, a, a photo from our office in London, uh, and I'm here to tell you about the journey we've made, and hopefully through that, share with you some insights. Three years ago, Kano started with a challenge. My little cousin, Mika, wanted to build and code his own computer, but he had a condition. I told him that I'd like to make a computer that was as easy as Lego, and no one would have to teach him. Kids today want to create, not just consume the world around them. We think they can, and we think they just need some simple, fun tools to get started. Kano is a computer kit you build and code like Lego. We've made sure that every step is simple enough for a six-year-old. You start with a story. A guided book shows you how to plug the pieces, build the computer, wire up a speaker, give it a cool style, and more. Your computer comes to life, and an on-screen journey begins. Like most kids, my kids love electronics. I was concerned about how much time they were spending on these things. I wanted something that she could do herself, so something that was teaching her something while she was having fun and being creative and just enjoying it. You start coding magical creations, and it feels like a game. Stories and challenges show you how to make music, draw art, and even hack your own games like Minecraft, Snake, and Pong. You get to know your computer. You make it your own. You look back and, wow, you've learned something new. Instead of just playing Minecraft in his spare time, you can actually be coding it and changing it like Kano, making the game instead of playing it. Kano is an all-in-one kit. It's your ticket into a safe, global community of thousands of curious and creative kids. Anyone can make the future. A simple kit is just the beginning. Do you think it was a good commercial? Anyhow, so this is the computer, right? And we designed it to be simple and fun. So actually, a six-year-old can build it by herself. And over the past two years, since we launched on Kickstarter, we're super thrilled to announce that we've already delivered over 70,000 of our computer kits to customers in 86 countries, India among them. Now, you know, the reason why I'm on stage is because I really wanted to share with you some of the things we've learned along the way so you can go about your own dreams, your own adventures, and try and, you know, kind of encapsulate some of the things that we've done uh, and still are doing uh, in order to build our company. And it really starts with finding those 
few people that resonates with your wild dreams, that can really feel and share the sense of commitment to something that you're trying to build from scratch. For me, it started with my co-founders, with Alex and Sol, and also our first employee, Alejandro, who was basically hired after uh, we, um, we took him for dinner uh, on a ramen soup in London uh, and buying him a beer. We thought it's a good idea, so it obviously helped. Uh, but since then, we've grown to a team uh, of 47 people now, most of us based in London. We don't have people yet in India. Uh, and really, it's about finding these people who are committed, who are passionate about what we're trying to build. Uh, and it's not just the founders. It's, it's, it's the people who are joining you early on, the partners, and I'll get to that in a second. But most importantly, it's the people outside the building. It's the people that you're building this for. You know, and I've been walking around in the past two days throughout the startups here, which are so many of them, and you know, there's one simple question that always interested me, which is, you know, have you talked to your customers? Have you tried it out with them? Have you listened to their feedback? So we've done that, and we've spoken with so many people and so many kids when we build the product in order to make sure that this is what they need, that this is what actually would make them happy. And then, after the people, you need to have a mission. You need to have a mission that is long-lasting, that is strong, that resonates not only with yourself, but also with the people you're going to bring into the team, the people you want to raise money from, the people you want to partner with. And our mission was very clear. We want to build a company that will give tools that anyone, anywhere can make, learn, and play with technology, not just consume. For me, Cano is really just about giving you the opportunity to control your own future. It's not even just about making computers, because ultimately computers shape the world. They have shaped the world, and they're going to shape the world more. When you look into your pocket, you have a mobile phone. That's a form of computer. And giving people that control over that allows them to control their destiny. I mean, Cano, the Cano computer gives people that potential. I mean, you have the power to control all these devices and know how they work. And from that, the opportunities are limitless. This is just a stepping stone to put you onto a platform which can enable you to hopefully change the world. So we're trying to change the world and we're working really, really hard every day. And I absolutely urge all of you that whatever it is, the thing that you want to do, you know, wake up in the morning and really make sense to you and make sure that it, you feel the mission, that you feel that what you're building is meaningful. And sometimes it starts with one person, the person across the street, the person in a classroom or in a university that you're asking, you know, is it interesting? Do you think it's important? But of course, you need to listen to what you want to do. And uh, you know, I wanted to share with you this story that I had in Jaipur last week. I was eating lunch in this restaurant, and the waiter came. Uh, and I asked him how old he was. And he said, I'm 32, which is basically my age. And I asked him if he has children. And he said, I have two children. I have a boy named uh, Kamal, who is 10, and a girl named Nitu, who is 8. And I asked him if they ever seen a computer before. And he said, he doesn't think so. So I said, well, I'm going to send you a computer kit. Uh, and I think it can really help your children to be excited about engineering and design and technology. And hopefully, you know, they would love it so much that they would want to be engineered and go to study in university. You know, and his reaction was so simple. He just stood there basically in shock by this simple gesture that I've made. But for me, it really resonated with anyone, anywhere. You know, today, I would say a lot of people can buy our computers, but we really want to make sure that everyone can tap into what we're creating. You know, and then we also had some other trends that are important to identify as you build your product and company. You know, for us, it was a single board computer, a Raspberry Pi, that you can buy today for $35 to do all sorts of stuff with coding. But also, you know, millions of millions of children today in the world learning to code, and millions are participating in maker firms all around the world, also in India. And there are 1.3 billion children that were born only since YouTube was launched. I mean, that's... That's insane. We're talking about over a billion children that were born only in the past 10, 11 years. This is the world we live in. This is the generation that is going to shape the world we live in in the 21st century. And it's also important to have a, a narrative to your brand uh, and you know, why it's important to have, to have that company and to have that mission. And for us, you know, the name Kano, 
comes from judo. It's the, found, it's the family name of the founder of judo. Uh, and what he did to martial art, basically making it accessible to the wider international audience, really resonated with what we're doing to technology, making it simple, fun, powerful, and playful. So anyone at any age, anywhere in the world, can play and make with technology. And we're bringing that sort of playfulness and simple design and I'm ensuring that girls and boys together can enjoy the product and the platform that we're building. Um, and we have so many girls, which is just exciting. And it starts with the simple things of being able to customize your own character, like in this example. You know, and then, of course, there is product, which is the one single most important thing when you start a company. What is that product that you're building that is going to make a difference, that is going to tick people? And we're building hardware. We're building a computer, and that's ridiculously hard, right? It's not just going to China with your co-founders and you know, wearing funny hats and making sure that the production is ready, but it's really about designing things at a quality that when you only develop software, it's very different. You know, when we delivered our first production, it was 18,000 units. It was our first production ever, and we sent it to people in 86 countries. And the one thing that was important for us as a team, as a company, was this. You know, we got to ship the product that we promised to people. It has to work, so when people get it, it works, despite all the complexities. And if we've done these two things on our first product, that's already going to be a wow. But you have to have that time and confidence that what you're building is going to be beautiful, that is going to be on a quality that is at the core of the DNA of your organization. And you know, you start with something scrappy, like this brown box that we've basically designed and put together in a flat in London. But we went out and we tested it with kids and we wanted to see what they think about it. You know, and, and then we started working with designers and that package evolved and it became more appealing and more beautiful and encapsulating more of the things that we thought are important in order to deliver Mika what he wanted, which is something that is simple and fun as Lego. And that evolved into a whole range of prototypes, which eventually ended with the product that we launched on Kickstarter about two and a half years ago. But it's not only the hardware and the packaging. It's also about the storytelling. So we've designed books, just like in Lego, that step by step takes the users in understanding how can they build their own computer in a very simple and fun way. And an operating system that is open source, where we have all sorts of applications where the kids can learn to use code in a playful way in order to make artwork and to make sounds and games. And the most beautiful part, they can share it on a social network. So this was coded by a kid for, uh, for her dad for Valentine's Day, which was recently. But actually, on the right side, you can see the code that they were using in order to create that artwork. And we're not talking about engineers at the age of 22. This was created by a, a, an eight or a nine-year-old child. right? So giving them the power to play in a fun way with code uh, in the future, they'll figure out if they want to be programmers or not. But at the beginning, it's about giving them an entry point into something that they perceive as so magical. You know, if you've ever seen a child swiping a finger on an iPad, you would realize, oh my god, this kid is genius. But actually, it's super intuitive. So we want to deconstruct that magic, and we want to completely demystify what technology is so kids like Mika can make and play with technology, not just swipe a finger and consume games. And we've tested the product all over the world, not just in the West. You know, we went to Africa and to China. And it's been amazing to see that you know, it resonates not just with kids in New York and London, but also with kids in Sierra Leone and in Beijing um, and in other parts of the world. And getting these sort of quotes from children that when they built a computer, it made them feel like super children. Hi, I'm Nalan. You can't do it on your own. You need partners. And you need to identify the key partners as early as you can. And we've been super privileged to have partners all along the way from day one. Of course, starts with founders, but also with the team that we've hired, the partners that we've worked uh, on the supply chain. For example, this is the first trip I've made to Shenzhen uh, three years ago. I took a flight literally 10 days after we've incorporated the company because we needed a, a keyboard supplier. I never been to China, didn't speak Chinese, but I said, you know, we got to go there and we got to find that supplier. And it was incredible because all I came to these two people who own a factory for keyboards is a story, is what we want to build. 
We didn't have a product, we didn't have money, we didn't have anything, but I thought that it would interest them. And they were super happy hearing about the idea, and we're working with them until today on designing and manufacturing our keyboards. You know, but it goes across all of our partners, across design, uh, supply chain, and it's been really, really invaluable to find these partners who believe in your product, the mission, and care about what you do, so you can actually go and execute on all the things you need to do as an early stage startups. Not to mention investors, and you know, we've been super, super privileged to work with some of the most renowned investors in the world that have backed these companies. Um, and it's so critical to find people who are not only giving you money, but also really care about what you're trying to build. I know I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to finish by saying that you know, it's not only about designing. You need to always be selling your product. So we've launched even a prototype. We've manufactured 200 units in our own apartment, and we've launched it because we wanted to see if anyone likes the idea. And we've hand-delivered some of them to people without logistic companies, without anything. And then we went to Kickstarter and did a, a $1.5 million Kickstarter campaign that people from 86 countries have backed us. And of course, we got some press, which is always important to develop the relationship with press. Uh, among them, you know, people like Walt Mossberg that gave us an incredible feedback. And really, the takeaway are these five elements. Find people who are committed, you know, have a timely uh, and strong mission that will outlast the company and even you in the future. You know, build a lovable product and develop a beautiful story and a strong brand. You know, work with world-class partners and always be selling what you're doing because you don't know who is around the corner. So thank you very much and I hope it was helpful.